Minnesota State returns to the home ice one last time here in the regular season, looking to climb closer to a WCHA championship and starting to make their playoff push in the NCAA tournament. Good evening, I'm Don Westfall, joined by Dan McCarger. We welcome you back here to downtown Mankato, and of course the Maverick pregame show, sponsored by Coldwell Banker Commercial Fisher Group. And Dan, that's a mouthful, and right now the Mavericks have a lot of things going their way as far as a mouthful of offense, defensively top-ranked team in the country. This team, after a week off, looks like they are set to go here for the last two weeks of the regular season. Well, they get Mark Michaelis back, and he's one of the best players in the country, uh, so that can't hurt. Uh, and he, you know, centers right away the the uh, top line. He's got Souter to his right, um, so they're they're getting healthier that way. Jake Jeremko is centering line number two. Uh, things are you're trending in the right direction for this team. We talked about the push for the uh, WCHA championship. A quick look at the standings coming into this weekend. We will not know tonight, but potentially tomorrow night, depending on what happens up in Alaska between the Seawolves and Bemidji State. The Mavericks, as you see, coming in five points ahead right now in the standings. They want to close this thing out this week. And they do not want to have to go up there and necessarily do a lot of damage at Bemidji next weekend. Magic number is eight. These are three-point games, so it's conceivable with the win tonight and the loss up in Alaska, the Mavericks could wrap it up tomorrow evening, but there's a lot of work to be done. Let's see uh, what the coaches think about tonight's contest. So we'll bring them in right now. Mike Hastings for the Mavericks and for Alabama Huntsville, Mike Corbett. Well, we'll rely on the leadership group, but our sport lends itself to you better keep both feet on the ground. You know, there's only 60 teams, and weekend in, weekend out, you see somebody get beat that, you know, might have had a, a complete disparity in wins uh, depending, between the two teams. And it's just our, our I think, parity runs rampant in college hockey. And so if we're not on our game, if we don't come out and uh, earn the win, we're not going to win. That's just the way that this game is. So we're going to have to come out, be disciplined, try and dictate pace, um, and like I said, get the rust off as soon as we can. Job, and we've played and we've played them in situations. And like you say, right now they're not they're not freshmen. They got guys with you know we got 32 games or whatever we have 30 games. So that's that's what it is. And, and we've played them and they've played in all those situations. They're a good group. They're still maturing. As you know, they got to get stronger. Um, that'll come in time. But uh, we like we like the group as a whole. We thank their coaches for their involvement in the pregame show. Usually at this point, Dan, we talk about some offensive players that we expect to see in the ice tonight. We're going to change things up a little bit here tonight and talk about the special units for both of these clubs. They're really at the opposite end of the chart. You'll see the Mavericks right now first in WCHA in the power play. They're actually seventh overall in the country, while uh, Alabama Huntsville dead last in the country on the power play. And, of course, the Mavericks right now one of the best penalty-killing units in the country. This is a point of the game where it's obviously really important for the Chargers to stay out of the box. Yeah, no question. I think both teams would like to have this be a five-on-five -five game all evening long. The Mavericks would love to run uh, four lines all night long and just play five-on-five, -five, but it, if it gets to special teams, uh, I don't think there's any question that the Chargers are in trouble. And we heard from Mike Casey, it's interesting. He's changing some things up a little bit as far as his power play unit. Yeah, there's, there's a mix of lines tonight, uh, and they need to be good quick. We'll see how quick they are. We'll see on that first opportunity. Maybe we'll take an early power play. We'll see what transpires after this break. Coming back to downtown Mankato here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Don Westfall, Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato, Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center, where it's David back as bobblehead night. Dan, we heard they're gone. Obviously, only a thousand in the building on a night where David back is actually traded today, ironically. But his former college team here, Minnesota State, ranked third in the country coming in. And as we talked about during the pregame, just five points separating them from Bemidji State. So a little bit of a cushion there for Mike Hastings and the team. They'd like to close it out this weekend. If not, the Mavericks end the regular season next weekend up against the Beavers. And on the other side, Mike Corbett. Having a tough season, Don. 2-22 and 22 with no road victories on the season. Interesting to talk to Coach Corbett uh, about just where things and status of hockey right now in Huntsville. As you see, 
our starting goaltenders today. Mark Sinclair, been in the nets for most of the season for LMM Huntsville, much along the lines of Gerard McKay, although when these two teams met back in October, McKay was in net for only one of the two games. That was the only game Jackson Stauber played for the Mavericks in a win. The Mavericks with a 4-1, 5-1 sweep that weekend against the Chargers. Mavericks 26-0-4 in the last 30 meetings. Chargers have not defeated the Mavericks going back until the 2002 2003 season. I remember talking about this last year, Dan. At some point, a streak like that oh, would sure. have to end. Uh, whether it's this weekend or not, probably, uh, let's put it this way, if you're a Maverick fan, obviously, you hope that's not the case. Seems unlikely. It uh, indeed would, given statistically where these two teams are rather deep in the season. But we're glad you're with us here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend as Charlie Gerard quickly will go to work, put in a nice shot that's a uh, Short side on Sinclair, and he was hugging the pipe on the play. Souter back in the lineup after missing the last three games. Scheid will float one down low, played out into the slot, no one there. Smolik at the point will hold. Charlie Gerard again behind his net. Out in front, Souter one time, but Michaela spins one around, and Sinclair has seen enough of that and will be more than happy to let that first line get back onto the bench. And Mike Hastings said he wanted to buzz right away. Well, guess what? They're buzzing right away. Opening faceoff and nearly ends up in the back of the net. First goal, huge tonight. He wants it early tonight. Forward line chemistry because there's a lot of changes on these forward lines. And then on the man advantage, can the Mavericks make Alabama Huntsville pay when they take penalties? Kind of Mackey trying to play the angle out to Jeremko, but that was blocked defensively. Chargers playing a real young team. And that has a lot to do with their record, but uh, the thought is in the future they should be pretty good. It's a freshman group for the Chargers that actually are second in the WCHA as far as scoring on the season with 57 points. Mavericks back at work with Jeremko and Connor James. Played here to the near side. Olio takes a hit. You're going to see a size disparity and a strength disparity between these two teams with the Mavericks a much more experienced, older, stronger team and Chargers with young guys who are just learning how to play the college game and don't have the, their men bodies nearly as much as the Mavericks do. Liam Isaac loses an edge. Here come the Mavericks with Naprovnik and Toomey. Trailer is Josh French. Chargers back the other way. Francis dumps it into the zone, but that is an icing call, and we'll take the faceoff back into the Maverick offensive zone. Good to see number 20 back on the ice for the Mavericks. First game since January 17th. His point totals are not going to get to where he would have had that injury not had occurred. He was on pace to make a run to the very top, but uh, he's going to end up just a little bit short. He missed quite a few games in the last month. But couple, it's good to see him back. Yeah, a couple players in front of him on the Maverick all-time uh, Division One scoring list. The Smoley is wide. Michaelis missed the last seven games. He's still second in the WCHA in scoring. Shy to head for Naprovnik. Into the zone. Drop pass. Toomey's down deep, and he just whistles one wide. Gervais. Naprovnik. Toomey. Napravnik one more time. Zmolik, we're getting a penalty coming up here as the Mavericks in the zone. I don't know who they gonna caught. Get a, gonna get a hook. Hooking call. You gotta do oh, something, because the Mavericks were just all over them. Dallas Gerrads drawing things over back in the zone with one of the Chargers. Looks like that's Max Coyle. I don't think Max Coyle wants anything of that either. He's a big kid, six feet tall, 185 pounds, but I don't think he wants anything to do with uh, Dallas Giraffe. But you see the hook right there. So the Mavericks on the power play, as we just mentioned in the pregame top in the WCHA, 26.4, 33 goals and 125 opportunities. The penalty kill for the Chargers, ninth out of the 10 teams in the conference, 76. And here's a quick opportunity by Michaelis. It's a heck of a save. Shied. Trying to find Michaelis on the weak side, but that's broken up and set down the ice. The 
Kalis back for Toomey. As you heard Dan mention, special units here on the power play, different combinations for Coach Hastings. So they don't have a whole lot of time to get used to this either. Toomey one times one loose puck, and it's covered up on top of the crease by Sinclair. Mike Hastings also said he may not be real patient with the new alignment. He's going to try it. He, he says he likes what he's got. He's got the numbers written down. He likes the way he's got them, but doesn't sure how long he's willing to stick with it if it doesn't go well. But so far, they look really good. Their first uh, the, look the, was really yeah. good down low, and yes. Sinclair made a huge save on that one. Jeremko. Folio in for the face-off for their respective clubs. Chargers will get this one. Coyle will try to clear on the zone, but Napravnik holds. Played in on net again, and Sinclair will take another face-off. Mavericks only have four shots on goal now, but it seems like about 10 or 11 already. They've had some really good looks early on, but they've missed the net a couple of times. But uh, you certainly like to, uh, or have to like the energy that the Mavericks have so far tonight. Jeremko and Liam Isaac this time. Puck still on the faceoff circle. Newton will try to clear. Pushed out of the zone by Wood. Lutz. Mackey for Smith. Napravnik with still 50 seconds left in the power play. Jeremko played along the boards in the zone. Now to the far side. Lutz with some room to work with, and then his shot is blocked by Newton up into the net. When you have an opportunity to get it clear against this club, you just have to do it. And the Chargers had the chance there. They didn't. You get a uh, pass along the blue line and a pretty good look. Mavericks don't score, but again, Chargers, if you get that chance to get it out, you just have to get it out. Yeah, Mike Corbett was pretty confident that uh, this thing is heading in the right direction at Alabama Huntsville. If you give him some time, I think he thinks he can compete in this conference or uh, what he hopes is the new conference, the CCHA. Fully admitted that, uh, you know, right now with where they stand, they were not part of the initial seven, but pulled out of the WCHA in a couple years. They did a few weeks later. There's a one-timer, that one sent off the body of Sinclair with shot from Michaelis. Shied. Michaelis shied back one more time, and that one's up over the crossbar. Michaelis again. Trying to drop pass to Toomey, but it was set down the ice. Well, shot attempts and shots on goal are two different things. The Mavericks shot attempts uh, is incredible for this early in the game, but shots on goal are still listed as only three. Down deep, there's a quick shot by Souter. The backhand still in the slot area. Everybody taking a whack at it. The Chargers are back at full strength, but the Mavericks in the zone with Charlie Girard. Girard. Sending one down low for Michaelis. McNeely up high. Sends a rebound out in front. But Rivera can't convert on it. He'll get it behind the net. Boy, the Mavericks look so fast. Walker Dewar. Bailey Newton on him. Dewar still has it. Far side McNeely. Set wide of the net. He'll come back here to the point. Smolik is able to get there in time. Dallas Gerads knocked off puck on the play. Coyle with headman one to Wood, but it's still in the zone off a of skate. Bailey Newton here on the far or the near side is able to clear, and Carroll will pick things up for the Mavericks. Hookinson, he'll carry it into the zone. Hookinson out it for Carroll, breaking down between the circles. Smith. A couple of chargers on him. Lutz has one down low, and Sinclair was able to block that. They're only going to have to Zamboni half of the ice here, Don. It's incredible. Carroll with the shot through. A ton of traffic down low, and Lutz forces one wide. Smith now behind the net. Carroll, Smith, and they were trying to kind of do a give and go, and it's back at center ice. Carroll. Takes it into the zone, but gave up puck possession. Connor James now with it. The Mavericks have had scored a couple goals in games by this point already, but this is the fastest start they've had this year. This is incredible. The Provnik trying to feed Toomey. It's broken up. 
He's puck now behind the net and in the corner. French is there for the Mavericks. Toomey steps into the play and now Connor Mackey. McNeely will just leave one at the line. Pushed out of the zone by Latta. James is back the other way for the Chargers out in front trying to feed Bolio. Toomey. The Provnik gives way to French who'll carry into the zone. That shot is armed to side. Toomey. Shied. That one's lifted out of the zone. Latta. Chargers would like to see an interference call on the play. And it's going to result in an icing against them. Tough break there for Alabama Huntsville. Could have been a little bit of, uh, of embellishment, uh, but you could have had the interference and embellishment call. Could have. Not a bad crowd for a Friday night on a David Backus bobblehead tomorrow night. Apparently, uh, I don't know the number that they'll be giving away, but... I believe it's 1,000. Okay, caps tomorrow night to give away to close out the regular season. On senior night, out in front, Souter unable to find a way to tip that into the zone. He stood up by Coyle. There was a long line outside before the game, waiting in line for those bobbleheads. Well, I thought they were there for your autograph. Well, that was, uh, that was the other line. You were able to dismiss yes. them rather quickly? Yes. Okay. Brandon Salerno, he'll just play it back into the zone for Coyle. Far side... Lucas Bond poked away from him. Michaelis will put one into the zone. Dane Finson is back. Lead pass is broken up by Scheid. Scheid again with it. Zmolik ahead and dumped in by Charlie Gerard. Here comes Michaelis down low. Oh, I thought it was in off the top of the net, but it must have hit the pipe and bounced out. Light Lucas. came on. We'll, they'll absolutely look at this again to make sure. If he didn't score, I don't know how he didn't score. Because yeah, he, had, he had the goalie he down. Had, yep. He indeed had Sinclair down. You're right. Cleared out of the zone. Carroll will come back. They're going to call icing on this one, and we'll see indeed if we even have a look at that one. Now, it may or may not have gone in. I don't know. From that angle, it's hard to tell. Uh, but It looked like it yeah, was probably, probably caught the crossbar. Yep. Boy, the underside of the crossbar. Yeah, that's that's rough. He had him dead to rights. That would have been a nice way to get back into the scoring column after missing a few weekends. Rivera down low, forces one wide. Rivera to the point. Hookinson will send it wide. Carroll will step in from the point. Francis tries to clear. And the charge is able to at least get it out of the zone. Dallas Gerads is back. Brad's in the center tonight, position in between Walker and Rivera on that fourth line. Liam Isaac, Dryden McKay sends that one into the corner. Lukinson behind the net, trying to force the issue, along with Isaac. That's Gerads, the six game scoring streak, is able to carry out to center ice. Isaac. Played over to Lottengen. Neil Lottengen with the save. Bouncing puck down low, and Dryden McKay will cover up, and we'll take a break. 11 minutes left to go here in a scoreless first period on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Maverick Machine is in the building tonight to uh, keep the fans going as far as some tunes at their breaks and intermission. Mike Corbett, seventh year head coach. He said they're very close to hiring an athletic director. New president. New president, so. and he said they're going to get in the business of hockey. And it's a business? Yes, no question. Yep. There's no question. There's just This is a program that a lot of the teams that now in the what will become the CCHA, that announcement came uh, early this week from... To no one's surprise. Morris Kurtz, who's been helping the seven groups out as far as the development of the new conference. But uh, you'd like to have, obviously, an even number with eight. The Chargers would like to make a case to be that eighth team, but yet to be determined. The Provnik is back along with Hickey. Tanner Hickey had the lone goal. Out in front, Jeremko was able to have a decent look, but couldn't control the pass. Connor Mackey 
Ten points in his last nine games. Jaremko poked away from him. Neudecker can't control, but it's carried out of the zone by Jeffers. Central Collegiate Hockey Association and Arizona State. Doesn't, yep. doesn't make a lot of sense, but, uh, but for NCAA tournament-wise, they're going to make the tournament again this year. Newton behind the net. Yeah, speculation about his Smith will pick it up. Play it back to the point for Hookinson, near side Carroll. Lutz down low. They're trying to feed Smith, but Newton very alertly broke up that centering attempt. Bolio is back with Hookinson on him. Lutz taps it ahead for Jeremko. He'll get to the line and dump it in. But the speculation about uh, potentially do the uh, NCHC and then the newly formed CCHA maybe even trade a couple teams. Yep. More geographic alignment in that regard. But all indications are uh, one more year in the WCHA yes. for the Mavericks. And Michaelis with a shot and a quick glove from Sinclair and takes care of that opportunity. No score here in the Maverick Hockey Weekend and Flow Hockey TV. Back in downtown Mankato, down in Westfall, along with Dan McCarger. We've talked about it a few times tonight. There you see kind of all the details between the top two teams in the WCHA. And, of course, a few weeks ago we had the split here in Mankato. Those two teams meet next weekend. But uh, hopefully the Mavericks with a win tonight and a win by the Seawolves up in Alaska. And then we can come back tomorrow night and look not only for senior night, but also a presentation of the McNaughton Cup. So the magic number is eight going into tonight's action. Zmolik tracks it down behind his own net. Lottingen and Zmolik again after it. Sauter will lift one to center ice. Charlie Gerard Finson comes back to play that. Mackey, Charlie Girard for Michaelis. Michaelis trying to get one past Bond on the play. Josh Ladder, the leading scorer for the Chargers this year, is a freshman with 17 points. And that's another icing call against the Chargers. So the magic number is eight for the Mavericks. If they win tonight, the magic number goes down to five. These are three point games. If the Beavers were to lose this evening up in Alaska, that would be three points, so it'd be, the magic number would be down to two. There's the way the Mavericks could win on the home ice tomorrow evening and wrap up the title. That's the only way that they could wrap it up tomorrow night for certain. Now, they could wrap it up after if they win tomorrow night and, Alaska lose, er, and uh, the, the Beavers lose up in Alaska, but you would like to have the opportunity to do it on your home ice in front of your home fans, and that's not likely, to be honest. The Beavers are playing really, really well. They and the Mavericks' top two teams in the country in 2020, both with a win percentage of 875, 10, 1, and 1. Dewar. Dewar will bring it out in front, trying to find some room. That one is blocked defensively. Hickey will try to clear. It's tapped out of there by Lottingen. Connor Mackey. Dallas Gerrads behind the net. Last one off to Carroll, who had a bouncing puck and then sends one toward the net, but it went high. Sure, Mike Corbett is telling his guys, okay, we survived. Now let's start playing the game. You know, there was a real onslaught by the Mavericks. Now let's see if we can get into this thing. But the Mavericks has just been all on top of them. Every pass is contested. Every uh, opportunity is contested. And we've got three shots 13 minutes into the game. The Provnik, Carroll... Toomey will feed one for French, and the slot that one is up into the net. What they have to hope is they could get in the locker room scoreless, or worst case scenario, down a goal. Uh, because the way this started out, it looked like it was going to be a you know five nothing really quickly. But Mavericks haven't been able to put anything away so far, so they're hanging around. Mike Corbett told us their goaltenders used to seeing 40 shots. They expected to see 40 shots tonight, and they're on pace. Well, the Mavericks against this Charger team have uh, on four different occasions put 50 or more shots up. In fact, the record 
for the program 65 back in February of 2014. That's a shot a minute. <laughs> it was there was a shooting gallery yeah. that night, Dan. And, and you don't have the puck every minute. Toomey down low to the far side to Pravnik. Pravnik still with it. Net was open, but uh, couldn't release the pass. Toomey probably a little bit too unselfish on that play. Might have been better off taking yep. the shot. I think you're right. Another icing call. That's what you got to do, though. I mean, sometimes you just got to ice the puck just to give yourself a breather here because the Mavericks are just all over them. Get the goaltender there, Mark Sinclair, going he's <laughs> holy buckets. Toomey with just a little poke check and trying to work through the slot to get it to Naprothnik, but never was able to get a shot off. Mavericks have 11 shots on goal, but their shot attempts have to be near 25. Oh, yeah. Connor Merkley. Jaremko there trying to poke it away. Now carried out of the zone by Bailey Newton. Smith has it. The Mavericks into the zone. Smith with a quick shot, and that's armed out. Heck of a toe drag to be able to get that puck into the zone the way he did. Jaremko, McNeely, Smith trying to feed it here on the near side. That would have been for Lutz. Smith will come back, play it over to Lutz one more time, and the Mavericks will send it in. Mavericks were in the midst of a change, and so the Chargers able to control it and tap it into the zone. Dryden McKay is out for escape. They'll play it to the near side, trying to feed Souter. Mavericks now with Connor Mackey, who dumps it in. Sinclair out of the net to the near side for Hickey. Souter will break that up. Michaelis down low, plays it behind Charlie Gerard. Carroll steps in. Michaelis. And defeats Souter out in front. Charlie Girard, score! I don't think Sinclair saw it. It was by him so quickly. I don't believe he saw it. He looked back and like, oh, no. Nice play by yes. Charlie Girard. Let the puck settle a little bit and was able to get a nice shot off instead of trying to one-time it. And the Mavericks get on the board first. 5.09 left to go in the first period of play. It was bound to happen sooner or later, right out in front. He's got a lot to work with. And Mark Sinclair didn't have a whole lot he could do with it. Charlie Girard with his 13th goal of the season. Rivera dumps it back in. Charles Girard's on the far side. Now Dewar. Rivera behind the net. Michaelis and Carroll with the assist. So first game back, and here's a chance down low for Dallas Gerads, but he couldn't control the puck. But the first game back, and Michaelis with the point to the far side. First big save there as Bond had a good look coming in on a break, but McKay makes the save, and it's 1 0 Mavericks late in the first. Dryden McKay. Just coming up with a big save to keep the Chargers off the board. Mavericks with the 1-0 lead. Gerard at 14-51. Just a few moments ago from Michaelis and Carroll. Mavericks out shooting the Chargers on the board. As far as shots on goal, 13-4. But Dan, you speculated a few moments ago, probably 25 shots uh, attempted. Would, yeah. Now we're probably up over 30. I would assume so, yeah. it's It's been an incredible display. Uh, Mavericks haven't shot the puck incredibly well so far. They've missed a number of shots where they just didn't get it uh, on net at all. And uh, the Chargers have blocked a couple, but the Mavericks look really, really good. The Provnik down low in the slot. Score! Yeah, this team is real good at that. Following one up with another one pretty quickly. Sinclair thought he had it. Yeah. He didn't. Somehow it snuck through, maybe on the glove side. We'll take a look, but pretty quickly here, back to back, the Mavericks score about a minute apart. Well, that's the problem when you play a team like this. You know, you're hanging around, you're hanging around, all of a sudden you're down two goals and you figure your night's over. If it's the problem that gets his yeah. eighth of the season. There was a big mess in front of him, and that just dribbled through. Sinclair both times has looked to his left and just went, oh, man. Hickey on the near side. 
Just as a reminder, Dryden McKay's goals against is 1.37. Parker Toomey with a loose puck. Toomey and French. There's another shot that trickles just wide as French was out in front. So Naprodnik from French and Toomey. It had been a real scramble for the Chargers, but they had survived for about 13 minutes, and then all of a sudden, just like that, they're down 2-0, and with the goaltending the Mavericks have with the lack of shots that they allow, you know, you're, you're just not going to come back down 2-0 to this team. Reggie Lutz will play it back for Zmolik. Shy dumps it in. Lutz is on the near side, but it gets past him, and then... Sent out of the zone by Lottengren. Andy Carroll is back from Minnesota State. Smith left off for Jeremko. Jeremko works past Finson, and then he's tripped up. No call. Forced behind the net. Lutz with it. Lutz along the goal line for Jeremko. Tries to sweep it out in front. Bouncing puck that Lutz took a swat at, and then as Smith was trying to follow up. Carroll will break up that play. Isaac couldn't make a play on it or it would have been offside, so the Mavericks were able to control the puck. As we're nearing two and a half minutes left to go in a first period. Shots are 14-4 in favor of the Mavericks and attempts have got to be about 30 to 7 or 8, maybe. Souter down low for Michaelis. He'll bring it out to the face-off circle. Behind for McNeely, Charlie Girard with the goal in the period. Girard, McNeely, down for Souter. Trying to find, that was uh, Michaela's back door on the play, but it was broken up. Bailey Newton. Now Brandon Salerno will at least lift one out of the zone. Well, the Mavericks are just winning every race to the puck. I mean, it's, it's incredible how often they get there before one of the Chargers does. Tapped into the zone. Uh, actually, I guess Wood did not catch any part of that puck, so it's going to be an icing call. We talked about uh, senior night tomorrow night, and I think throughout the weekend we're going to get a chance to look at some of the senior packages put together. Pretty, pretty nice. They are very nice, done by the production crew and the students at Bethany Lutheran College, but all seven seniors... Kind of being honored for their years of work here with the program. And uh, talk about a group of seniors who have left their mark on Maverick hockey. That is a huge understatement. Put up a bunch of wins, but there's a couple more wins that they want. Score! <laughs> Rivera with a really nice feed down low, and Shy just had to one time it almost into an open net. That's a basketball play there where you get the layup at the end. That was, that was as pretty as you could do it. The speed that they're playing with is just something the Chargers can't match. 18-31, but boy, right on the stick. And as you said, Shy able to redirect that one past Sinclair. A lot of net to work with there as Shy was able to pick it up deep. Rivera will get one of the assists. And Shy with his second goal of the season. Of course, had a third that doesn't count, but was able to pick up the big goal in overtime up in Alaska to give the Mavericks two points on the night. Like Hastings said, they're going to have to work off the rust a little bit. I say the rust is off. Zmolik also picking up an assist. So the Mavericks, three goals. Already nine guys in the scoring column here with a minute left in the first. Here comes Walker Doerr. He picks one off. Doerr with shot, and that one is off the stick of James up into the net. Mark Sinclair has just got to be going, you know, I've, I've faced a lot of shots this year, but holy buckets. This, uh, the pressure that he has seen in the first 20 minutes of this game is incredible. Shots are at 18-4, to four, but honestly, Don. Uh, there, there have been seven games in yeah. the WCHA this year where the goalies have made 40 or more saves. Sinclair has five of those, yeah. and he's on his way to another one tonight. Yeah, no question. He actually, in the 0-0 uh, tie last week that... Uh, Lake uh, or, uh, Alabama Huntsville had against Lake Superior State. He made 44 in that game, 73 on the weekend against the Lakers. The 
Lakers would win the second of the two games, 4-1. to one. He had 84 saves earlier this year in the series against Bowling Green back in early December. That shot as Naprovnik might have had a chance to redirect it, but Sinclair makes the save. It's got to be 17 minutes to two minutes in time of possession here in the first period of play. I'd say that's that's a fair number. Uh, the Chargers haven't been able to get the puck out of their end, much less sustain any offensive pressure. And by the way, those five games with 40 or more saves is another one in on that. That lead, there's tied for the lead in the country for that statistic. That 0-0 tie last weekend, yeah. first time ever in Huntsville history. Yeah. Mavericks have had a couple of those. We've been lucky enough to call both of those. There's yes. Not a lot of thrill to that one, but. Sinclair, I mean, under the circumstances, his numbers are pretty good, but you just have no chance when you're seeing that many shots night in and night out. Gives you a lot of work, though. Lukinson making that. Taking that shot, he'll have another look at it from the point down low. French with the puck trying to get it in behind. Flip now near the top of the crease by Naprovnik, who gathers it up and brings it up on top. Toomey for Hukinson. Puts one. That's off the post. Well, you can hear it out up here easy. Lifted out to center ice with 10 seconds left in the period. 3 nothing and two posts. At least two posts. Back behind McKay, and that's where the period is going to end. But the Mavericks, not having scored a wow. goal in almost the first 15 minutes of play, are able to open up a 3 nothing lead after one goals by Gerard, Dubrovnik, and Shy. And again, Mavericks, as of right now, unofficial on the board, out shooting the Charger shots on goal wise 22 to 4. We will take a break. We'll come back with the first intermission, have a chance to hear from one of the Mavericks, maybe look at one of those senior spotlights on this Maverick senior class. That and more coming from downtown Mankato, where again, after one, it's Minnesota State 3-0 over Alabama Huntsville. Welcome back to downtown Mankato, where the score is now 3-0. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. I'm Marissa Voss, and I'm joined by number 20 senior forward, Captain Mark Michaelis. Mark, the saying goes, you get one and the rest will come. How has this team come together late in the first to get a three-goal advantage over Huntsville? Um, you know, one of our identities is just we're never getting satisfied. To, no matter what the score is, I mean, you saw in the last games and we were down by, by two or three. Um, we always play like uh, it's a tie game. And um, even though it was one nothing, I think we just kept playing. And that's why we got a uh, reward for it. Mark, you've been out of commission for roughly a month. Is it hard to shake out that rust or is it like kind of like you never left? <laughs> yeah, it's for sure. feels a little weird, a little surreal to get back into it. But, um, yeah, the boys have done a phenomenal job just getting making it as smooth for me as, as possible. And um, so far, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way we play. Good luck in the second, Mark. Thanks. Thank you. Coming back from break, we're going to be airing some senior videos, Charlie Gerard and Nick Rivera. These videos are available on the MSU YouTube channel. You don't want to miss it, guys. Stay tuned. We're back in downtown Mankato, the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center, Don Westfall. And Dan McCarger here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend as the Mavericks right now early off to a great start, 3 nothing. All three goals in the last five and a half minutes of that first period of play, Dan, and obviously it gives us a chance to talk about a few highlights. I think you're right. It all began with Charlie Girard at 14.51, his 13th of the season from Michaelis and Carroll. Again, it's one nothing Mavericks. Then 15.42, one minute, and uh, just about a minute later, Julian Naprovnik is eighth of the season from Josh French and Parker Toomey, 2 nothing Mavericks. Then Ian Scheid. From Nick Rivera and Reese Molick on a nice play, 18-31 in the third period. That makes it 3-0 Mavericks. The shots differential when you see it here in just a second is going to be shocking. And this is shots on goal. Shots on goal, attempted shots on goal. So shots on goal are 22-4. Attempted shots, according to the official sheet, are actually 43-4. Their shooting percentage is perfect. They're four for four, but they've only attempted four shots to see the block shots there. Penalty minutes in the Mavericks winning the faceoff battle. 15-0. Bowling Green rolling over Ferris in the third. Bemidji and Alaska underway a little later on. Gophers and Penn State are scoreless. That Lake Superior scores a shock. Lake Superior up 5-0 on Northern Michigan. I don't know what's happened in Northern Michigan, but 
they uh, the wheels have come off that one. St. Cloud, North Dakota in the first, and Western Michigan trailing Duluth in the second period. You look at the standings of the WCHA. See the Mavericks again on top by five. Huntsville mathematically still has an opportunity, but they would need to kind of win out and then get some help from teams like Bemidji State. We don't want that to happen. No. They're being very selfish, and that's fine. We can do that here in a Maverick Hockey Weekend. But again, the Mavericks hopefully get the three points that Dan talked about, and it's the magic eight that remain. And then after we conclude our broadcast, things will be heading uh, under a start up in Alaska between Anchorage and Bemidji State. Hopefully that goes the way we want it. And then we can come back here tomorrow night with senior night and another win and another McNaughton Cup championship for a regular season spot here in the WCHA. Mavericks again at Bemidji State next weekend. We are then back, we know, for what well, we hope to be two at least, if not more, consecutive weekends. Mavericks will open up the playoffs at home, uh, depending on their seed, as uh, either a first or second against the seventh and eighth. That's the weekend of March 6, 7, and 8. Mavericks then, because of the top two finish, would be assured of being home the next weekend as well. That would be 13, 14, and 15 of March, all in front of what is a one-game winner-take-all WCHA championship at the home of the highest remaining seed. That would be one game on Saturday, the 21st. We were able to bring you all those games last year in what was a thrilling race to the Jeff Sauer Trophy and a spot in the NCAA tournament, really, that the Mavericks already have. Yes, Mavericks are in 100%. Uh, the math says that there's no way that they don't have a spot in the tournament. Uh, if they were to lose the rest of their games, they would be in. So right now, from their perspective, obviously you're looking for a higher seed. Pairwise rankings, uh, some of the other rankings. Actually, Pairwise has them number two, I believe. They're third in the national rankings. But a uh, top four seed, as far as the Pairwise, would give them a top seed in one of the four regionals. And the most recent... Um, Wow, just had a player lose an edge and smash into the wall. But um, the most recent uh, outlook had them heading out east, which uh, seems like the likelihood is pretty good unless they end up as the number one seed overall. I still think that um, unless North Dakota falls apart, they're going to end up going um, to Colorado. Boy, you just fought right through that, Dan. Very nicely done. Thank you. You are a team player. You, you and I are both all of a sudden yeah. dealing with something here. Yeah. It's that time of year. Yeah. Speaking of which, Dan, there, I, I heard rumor that there is a possibility if the Mavericks can get to the Final Four nationally in Detroit, we're taking the show on the road. I'm all for it. I mean, that's, yeah. that yes. means our students, it's yes. our crew. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm available. Let's just say that. We, we'd find a way to make that work? Yes. Latta. But let's get one victory in the NCAA tournament. Before we, uh, before we count any chickens here. That's right. We've got a little work to do before that. Some more banners to drop potentially for next year with some trophies. Newton behind the net will play it to the far side. Lada trying to work away from a couple of defenders, and now it's brought out by the Mavericks. French. Toomey. Low angle shot that's kicked behind the net. Toomey to the far side. Shied looks for number two. Bouncing puck that Naprovnik can't get a handle on. Shied. Naprovnik overskates the puck. Played ahead. And here comes Allen the other way. Allen will play it over to the bench. And do we got hot two? I'm looking for numbers because it was just oddly played over there in some traffic with guys jumping in and off the bench. It could have had an offside even because the puck was out of the zone and then brought in offside as well. But either way. Toomey with the shot, and that's sent to the far side. Smolik tries to pinch in on the Provnik, but here come the Chargers, two on one. Allen, and then he puts a pass behind Salerno. There was nothing he could do with that. Mavericks the other way with Dallas Gerrads. Rivera. The Provnik busts a stick on that shot. Rivera. McNeely puts it back into the corner. Lifted out of the zone and out of play, actually. Can't afford those busted sticks because uh, a lot of people have heard the stories about where the hockey sticks are coming from and that there's, you know, a very likelihood of a, of, a, of a shortage of hockey sticks because so many of them are coming out of China. And because of the coronavirus, 
the, the, there's been a lot of plants that have shut down. So you'd have never even thought about something nope. like that. No, nope. but that's that's the reality. So let's let's take care of these sticks as much as we can. Dallas Gerads, um, they're gonna, gonna reset some time on the clock here. This was over talking things over. Yep, they put two more seconds up. So well, 16. Thank, thank goodness we got that taken care of. Rivera, McNeely, just puts it to an open wing to try to hold the zone, but then Neudecker sends it out. McNeely chips one off the boards for Rivera. Head for Dewar, sent out of the zone one more time. Dallas Gerads pulls one away, and Mavericks trying to go to work in the zone. Dewar. Back for Dallas Strads. He'll bring it out in front. Tried to find some room on the far side. Bouncing puck still down low. And then Sinclair on one of those bounces. Don't know if it ever got back to the ice, but a dangerous play there. And Sinclair is able to hold on to the and Walker Dewar's going, you got to be kidding me. I mean, he was on the, the doorstep. Had a pretty good look and just couldn't put it away. Took his stick and kind of bounced off his chest like, God, I can't believe that one didn't go. Looking for his third goal of the season, 15th of his career. Mavericks with their top line of Michaelis between Charlie Girard and Lucas Souter. Charlie Girard gets to the puck, Michaelis to the point. Hookinson sends one down low, and that's kicked into the corner. Michaelis along the boards trying to hold, but then Peyton Francis pulls it out. Gerard McKay. Takes one away from one of the Chargers attacking on the play. Charlie Girard off the boards, held in at the zone. That was Liam Isaac on that play for Alabama Huntsville. Carroll, Charlie Girard, Newton turns it around. Lottengen from Michaelis now. Hookinson, Andy Carroll. Souter trying to flip it into the corner. Along the boards, it will be tipped back up by Francis. Souter will play it to the far side. And Charlie Girard sends it in. Josh Latta behind his own net. Michaelis looking for a turnover. Francis along the near boards is able to play it out to center ice, but poked away. Lutz will play it back to... Shy, then a long lead pass for Smith. And then Smith unable to control the play as it was brought into the zone. And defensively, that was Finson back. Bolio for Latta. Out in front, Bolio can't find a way to trigger that one. And it's dumped out to center ice. Smith to the far side. Reggie Lutz, quick wrister, and that one's kicked out by Sinclair. Jeremko. Couple longer passes for the Mavericks. We don't see a whole lot of, but they got some open ice. Jeremko had a shot and a bouncing puck between the circles. Bond to the near side. Rochick. He'll just dump it in. Dryden McKay will leave things off for Mackey, and then left off for Josh French. Long lead pass. Ahead, Toomey will get there first, so no icing. Out in front trying to feed French. Toomey, flip pass intended there for Neprovnik. Karam's in on net. Sinclair has seen enough, and we'll take a break nearing that. Mavericks on top, 3 0 here as we've got 13 49 left to go in the second period of play. Mavericks with 29 shots on goal, already seven in the second period, and the Chargers, six minutes in, do not have a shot on goal. Neprovnik. Connor Mackey will dump it behind the net. Toomey on the near side. French thinks about a wraparound. There's a one-timer in Naprovnik, unable to unleash that one. Had a little room to work with on the near side. Flipped out to Toomey, who's able to pull one out of midair. Naprovnik, there's Toomey between the circles, and that one gets past Sinclair and trickles just wide on the near side. Here comes Josh French down low. He feeds it up on top. Score! Incredibly unselfish. And it leads to a goal. That was beautiful. 
He could have got off a shot. It probably wouldn't have gone in. Instead, he pulls it back. And the Mavericks are up 4 0. Parker Toomey with his 12th of the season. Yeah. French, his second point of the night. This is all Josh French, though. Drew the defender, drew the goalie, drops the pass back, and Josh French gets the assist on Parker Toomey's goal. What an incredible experience for the Mavericks tonight. They look really, really good. There's going to be a trip on the Mavericks. Yeah, Rivera is going to go right after the faceoff, and so the Chargers will get their first opportunity with the man advantage tonight. About the only mistake the Mavericks have made this evening was this penalty right here. 6.51 as Rivera is off. And as we talked about in the pregame show, Alabama Huntsville on the man advantage. There really hasn't been much of an advantage all year. They are last among the 60 teams in the NCAA. Nine goals and 126 chances. So that is a, a 7.1 conversion percentage. They've also given up five shorthanded oh. goals on the season. And the Mavericks on the penalty kill. Third in the country. Second in the WCHA. Good on a little over 90.5%. But on any given one, you never know. Dryden McKay takes a look at that shot from the top. You know, the, the stats say one thing, but on this particular one, you, it's, it's always possible. So if you're the Chargers, you've got to just keep on firing, keep on fighting. Max Coyle here with the shot. And there you see right off the faceoff, the bear got the stick down low and dropped Lottengren on the play. Coyle once again. Neudecker up on top. Finson with the shot that's wide. Coyle at the point. Latta puts one behind the net. Oh, Neudecker for Finson. That one is blocked. Loose puck that Lutz will pick up for the Mavericks. And he'll clear. Good puck movement. Couple opportunities. Got something going on the power play anyway where it wasn't just uh, in and immediately out. Ladder for Finson. He dumps it in. Smolik is back quickly for the Mavericks to tap it out. Be a race for the puck now. And Napravnik, he's got French trailing. Napravnik to the far side. He'll just bring it back, trying to play it to one of his own defenders, but it's picked up by the Chargers. And they'll regroup now with 47 seconds left to go in the power play. Played behind the net, near side for James. Merkley on the far side. Merkley again up on top. That shot hit a stick out in front as it was taken by Hickey, and it's up out of play. Shots are 31-5 now in favor of the Mavericks with 27 seconds to go on the man advantage, but Chargers at least down have uh, had some good entries on the power play. Had it set up, been able to move it around, and got a couple looks. So something to build on anyway, even though statistically it has not been good on the par play for the entire season. Michaelis and Isaac for the draw that the Mavericks will win. Played to the near side on Aaron Pass. There's a shot that's broken up. Michaelis thinks about unleashing Souter, and then his stick is broke. <laughs> I think it was actually broke trying to block something earlier, and maybe it was right there along the blade. Maybe some tape was holding it on, but as soon as he tried to make a play, it just disintegrated. Yeah, that or else, that's way too hard of a pass. <laughs> Hickey tees up a shot in on net, and as Rivera is out of the box, Mavericks back at full strength, and they'll take a face off in their own zone. Not a bad power play, though. The Chargers did not score, but they got some looks. They, As we mentioned, they got a couple of nice entries. They're able to move the puck around, and you know, that's all you can ask for is, you know, at least, you know, do the things that you have to do to make it successful, even if you don't actually have that success. At least you're, you know, you're not chasing the puck the entire period or the entire two minutes of the uh, power play, which we've seen teams have to do against the Mavericks this year. Rivera, he's got Dewar here on the near side. Rivera drags it back. Nice play follow-up. A couple of big saves first on Rivera and then Dallas Gerard shot. 
Rivera, and then it gets past Carroll at the point, but a really nice rush up the ice there for the Mavericks. Well, that was an incredible rush. Just, again, such speed, and to get all the way down that close, they got a really good look, just unable to finish. Gerads into the corner. Brought out by Salerno, but it turned over. Dewar plays it up on top. Wyatt Amet looking for an angle, sends one wide of the net. Dewar in the corner. Dewar trying to feed Lutz, but that pass was a little bit too far. And then Connor Wood will pick it up. Bailey Newton is able to clear, and that'll be an icing call. It's about midway through here. Midway through the second period, midway through the game. I don't remember the Mavericks playing this fast for this long in quite a while. I think uh, getting Mark Michaelis back and having those two weeks, off, or you know, the, the break uh, from the two weeks ago to last week and now playing this weekend, they seem rather energized tonight. Well, maybe that break beneficial and getting some guys, as you mentioned, getting them back healthy. Lucas Souter back and Michaelis back. Obviously missing Jared Spooner, but Lutz will bring it into the zone. Spins away from the check. Trying to feed one down low for Jeremko. At the point, Hookinson breaks it up. Now Lutz. Bouncing puck will go behind the net. Jeremko is there. Nathan Smith up on top for Hookinson. Puts a wrister that's kicked out. That's up out of play into the net, and we will take a timeout. 9.33 left to go in the second. Mavericks with another goal here in the second. And it's a 4-0 lead. Taking a look at our veteran of the game. Always honored here at the second period of a Maverick hockey game. Pretty impressive what he did. And as you mentioned, an awful young guy to have seen what he has seen. But that is one of the highlights of every Maverick home game. Mavericks with the draw. Toomey to the far side. That shot blocked by Bolio. It'll go all the way down the ice. Jack McNeely is back. Josh French with a couple of assists tonight. Dumped in by Connor Mackey. Mavericks trying to create something with the four check. Chargers unable to clear the first time. Be carried out here by Bolio. In the circles, James with the shot that is blocked. And here come the Mavericks with Parker Toomey. James back to take it away from Toomey. Off a skate, bouncing puck still in the zone. Toomey. Michaelis out there as well. Trying to feed one for Nebraska. Here comes Shide with the goal tonight. That shot gets blocked. Clearing attempt isn't good. Bouncing puck, it'll finally be cleared. Then Ladd is after it. Comes in on net. Shide with Neudecker on him. Smolik will carry. One-handed play ahead for Souter. Napravnik trying to feed one across the top of the slot. And the Mavericks are going to have to clear to avoid an offside. Poked away by Michaelis. Newton will clear to an open wing. Shide will pick it up and fire it right back in for Minnesota State. Michaelis with a heavy hit there on Newton. Charlie Girard with some movement of speed into the zone. Stops. Puts one in off the base of the net. Bouncing puck. Trapped along the net. Souter. Whoa. Souter gets spun around on the play. Looking for a penalty. No call made. Merkley. Charlie Girard on the turnover. Trying to feed one for Michaela. Set just wide out in front. Score! That's a lot of work. Lucas Souter with the finish. Charlie Girard with the final pass, but there was a lot of work going on behind the net for the Mavericks here that set this goal up. Tell you what, a couple times during that flurry, Michaelis yeah. is able to poke, check the puck off the stick of a couple of Chargers, and they're not able to clear. Well, that's the problem. If you can't get the puck out of the zone, you're in trouble. They finally came out and the Souter right out in front, he was able to finish, but yeah, there's a lot of work going along, along the wall, behind the net. 
uh, eventually lead to that goal. 5-0 Mavericks. Souter with his fifth of the season at 12:37. We're uh, thinking a couple of assists awarded on that goal. Gerard getting the assist along with Michaela. So both of those guys with two points now. Gerard with a goal and assist. Michaela with a couple of assists. Wyatt Amitz back the other way. Door to the far corner. Rivera catches up to it. Dallas Gerads now Doer. They're just not letting up at all. They're playing so fast. There has not been just one lull by the Mavericks at all tonight. Amit fires it just to keep it into the zone to the corner. Reggie Lutz. McNeely steps into the play. Skates out in front. There's a loose puck. Dallas Gerads trying to find some room. Still loose. Top of the crease. No one's there. And it's punched wide here on the near side. Smith, drop pass there for Scheid, into the corner, Lutz, out in front, loose puck again, and then Sinclair sees it between the skates and drops down, and Chargers a little bit of fight in him right now. The Mavericks had converged, and the, the, the intensity of the pressure just continues to heat up for the Mavericks in the offensive zone. Well, they're just incredible tonight. I, I just don't remember a time where they have been this aggressive on every single shift, Connor Wood going to the box. Looks like the Mavericks are going to have uh, Nick. No, nope. Rivera was skating towards the box where I thought maybe they were calling him or something, but it's just the penalty. Roughing call. Yep. Mavericks on their second power play of the night, already with a 5 0 lead. 13 51. Got to be such a long season when you've got two victories this late in the year. And Connor Wood, the frustration for the Mavericks just keep coming at you and keep coming at you. I, I completely understand where you say, man, I've had enough. Somebody's going to do some pushback, and he did it there. Off the draw, it comes to the near side, picked up and cleared there by Peyton Francis. Shied in his own zone. Charlie Gerard carried in now by Michaelis. Left off for Toomey up on top for Shied. Souter. Michaelis. Oh, to the far side, but uh, Charlie Gerard couldn't take the pass cleanly off the skate. Shied. Michaelis will tee up a shot, and that's sent wide. Souter. Shide down low trying to feed one for Parker Toomey, but that's between his skates, and then it's going to be sent down by Peyton Francis. Dryden McKay will leave things off for Shide. It's Mavericks. kind of funny to say this, but Michaelis might be fighting it a little bit. He's, he's got two points on the night, and he's had some looks that, that where I'm, I know he's going, I can't believe I just don't have it yet. Mavericks bringing it in, but it's picked up by Bolio, and he sends it down, and the Mavericks will regroup with 50 seconds left to go in their second power play of the night. Michaelis with a one-timer just a moment ago that he shot wide, and he, then he grabbed his stick and pushed it on the ice a little bit like, man, I can't, I can't get the feel for this thing. And he's got two points. Puck is picked up and carried out of the zone by Bolio. Don, I don't know that we've ever seen it, but the Mavericks could easily have 100 uh, attempted shots on goal tonight. And I don't know if we've ever seen that before. Lutz. Connor Mackey, Smith. Jeremko out in front, loose puck as it got caught up in a skate and is sent down. Pass was intended to find one of the Mavericks in the slot. Wood is already on his skates, and so the Mavericks will go 0 for 2 on the power play as it's played to the far side. Jeremko will regroup. Back to 5 on 5 hockey. Hukinson, lead pass for Smith. Dumped in for Naprovnik, but quickly turned aside. Latta is back the other way. Naprovnik steps in to break up the play, and then he sends it ahead for Dallas Gerads. Gerads and Tanner Hickey. That's going to be Dallas a Dallas Gerads gets dropped on the play. 
We will take a break as well. When we come back, it'll be the Mavericks on a power play with a 5 nothing lead. Easily be able to pick up the infraction on Tanner Hickey, Dan <laughs> you think? There's a chance. You might see the hold right there. Or we had Jim Makovsky on the air this morning on KTOE. That was a takedown. Should be worth two points rather than two minutes. Shied. Michaelis. Michaelis fanned on that attempt as he was trying to send one maybe over to Charlie Gerard on the play. Mavericks on their third power play of the night. So far it's really the only blemish they've had in the contest. Not converting with the man advantage. Michaelis. Souter. Souter one more time. Charlie Gerard. Souter drags one back, and it's into the body of Sinclair for the save. Did you happen to notice the drop pass the Mavericks used on that entry to the defender to gain speed? And how it was near the blue line rather than back near the red line? Going back to a couple weekends back where... You were not a fan of that with Northern Michigan. No, Northern Michigan literally was dropping it back almost half of the ice. And uh, they were gaining no speed out of it whatsoever. And since that weekend, it's been an absolute disaster for that club. And they've been playing really well until the Mavericks, uh, until they came to face the Mavericks. Since that time, they don't have a win. Jeremko wins the faceoff for the Mavericks. Mackey, Jeremko down low. Nathan Smith, they had Lutz here on the near side, but he fans on that attempt. Jeremko to the point for Mackey. Lutz, Connor Mackey, far side Jeremko, and they'll exchange spots. Jeremko, Mackey really didn't have an angle of which to shoot with. Jeremko with Liam Isaac on him. Now in the Provnik. Lutz will do one time one, and that's a <laughs> wicked shot up high. Connor Mackey, far side with Jeremko, and 47 seconds left to go in the power play. Lutz tees up another shot, bouncing puck. Follow up, score! Julian Napravnik with the finish. He jumped on that rebound and pounded it home. Napravnik with the shot, but I think actually Smith. Did it his, go off him? It, no, it's Smith. Napravnik gets the shot, but if you see it here on the replay, I think the puck handling by Smith to corral that rebound and get a pass off is, is a yes. pretty nifty play. Oh, no question. <laughs> Just yeah, he, he backhands it to Napravnik. But the problem with the finish. And the Mavericks with the power play goal. One for three with the man advantage, and the problem has got his second of the night. Goal. Yeah, this is turning out to be the kind of night the Mavericks wanted it to be. Carroll back to the hook, went away from Allen. Now Rivera. Dewar with Rads breaking in on the play. Smith and Lutz on the sh uh, goal, on the assist of that goal for Naprovnik. Dewar again with it, trying to use a defenseman Doyle as a screen. Dallas Rads poked away from him. Bailey's after along with Rivera. Now uh, Tier Thompson. Able to get it to Salerno, but he can't control and played in on that. And Mark Sinclair seen enough, and then Dallas Gerads, and you heard some stick there as Gerads and Bailey talking things over, and they both might go. Gerads yeah. got a left hand in there that um, I think is going to get him a little time in the box. You know, Mike Corbett said he thought his goaltender would seize 40 shots tonight. I don't think he meant it in two periods. Mavericks with 42 shots on goal through two periods. Two minutes. Both of them. We're going four on four here. That's not good for the Chargers. Nope. Both are gone at 18.35. Gerrads and Newton. Chargers with two shots on goal in 18 minutes and 35 seconds. Mavericks with three goals in that amount of time. Four and four again to close out 
the second period. Mavericks get to draw Amit for McNeely. Down to French. French behind the net. Amit. Amit on the near side, top of the circle. Plays it to an open corner for McNeely. Puts one in on net, and Sinclair will hold on for another face-off. You dump it to an open net like that, they've got the angle to get to the puck, and you beat them to the puck. That just can't happen. And those are the type of things that Mike Corbett, I'm sure, is going to say, guys, you know, they're, they're faster than us, and all, but, but we have to out-hustle them whenever we can. And that's a play where the Mavericks end up getting a shot on goal that they never even should have got the puck. Mavericks with another win in the face-off circle. And the Provnik with two goals out in front. Hookinson. That was a really good look in Sinclair with the save. Liam Isaac, and this one will be turned around. The Mavericks will have numbers the other way with Josh French. French plays it back for Naprovnik. Bouncing puck here in the near side, but too wide for Carroll to make a play on. Mavericks don't have a player with a hat trick yet this season, but Naprovnik will make a strong bid for it as the game moves forward. 30 seconds left to go in the second. Mavericks with three goals in each of the first two periods as Connor James able to poke it away from Michaelis. Here comes Peyton Francis. He'll just play one into an open corner. Hookinson is back along with Gerard. Now here comes Andy Carroll. One last rush. Mavericks three on two in the zone. Carroll near side. Michaelis, and he had some room to work with, but he knew he didn't have a lot of time, and he fans on that one-time attempt. Carroll will bring it back, and the Mavericks will close out the second period of play with now unofficially 45 shots on goal <laughs> after 40 minutes of hockey. Mavericks, three more goals in the period. Toomey his 12th, Souter his 5th, and then the Provnik, a power play goal, his second of the night, ninth of the season, and it's the Mavericks right now in control. They lead 6-0 after two periods of play here from downtown Mankato. We'll take a break. We come back, we'll hear from another one of our Mavericks, probably at least one more of our senior spotlights on a senior weekend here in Mankato. And again, the Mavericks in control. They lead the Chargers 6-0 on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Town Mankato, where the score is now 6-0. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. I'm Marissa Voss. I'm joined by freshman forward number 21, Lucas Souter. Lucas, this Maverick team has held the Chargers under shots on goal 10. I mean, what's been the keys to success? It's such great lockdown defense out there. Well, yeah, like you said, it just starts in the defensive zone. So as long as we bear down in the D zone and the neutral zone, uh, I think we have a really good offensive group. Uh, so as long as we keep cycling the puck down low, I think they have a tough time breaking it out. So we just got to keep getting pucks deep and keep getting shots on net, and I think they'll continue to have a rough time. You've been out of the lineup for a little bit of time now and getting your fifth goal of the season and the first night back. How are you feeling about that? Really good, yeah. It's kind of like getting the monkey off your back. But, yeah, uh, especially coming off uh, some time off, a uh, bye week. I know all the guys got some rest. So we're all ready to get excited to get back to these home games. So uh, just got to keep it going. Thanks, Lucas. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Coming back from break, if you like what you saw in first intermission, well, we've got some more senior video action for you. Josh French and Edwin Hookinson are on the way. Stay tuned, guys. Westfall. Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato on a Friday night. First of the two game series as the Mavericks close out the regular season. Um, obviously the score there would indicate a, a rather dominating performance for the Mavericks. <laughs> yeah. Our stats and our highlights would back that up, Dan. Let's uh, see what we have to look at here in the second period for some Maverick goals. We're going to look at the goals from the second period only. Parker Toomey is 12th of the season at 644 from Josh French and Charlie Gerard. That makes it 4-0. Then Lucas Souter from Gerard and uh, I'll get those uh, right. I'm sorry. That is uh, Josh French with the assist. Then Charlie Gerard and Mark Michaelis on the second goal. And Naprovnik with his third. With his second of the game, Nathan Smith and Reggie Lutz with the assist. Yeah, Mike score sheets is, is a mess also. 46-6 shots on goal. The attempt at 73-13. to Actually, the official number for attempted is 79. The Mavericks have attempted 79 shots so far. Faceoffs, 127-14. Mavericks, 21 attempted shots away from 100 for the game. I've never seen that before. There's a final for Bowling Green over Ferris tonight, 6-1. Bemidji State and Alaska coming up. Penn State leads the Gophers there midway through the second period. 
Lake Superior State wins 6-1. North Dakota up over St. Cloud 1-0 in the second. And it's a final Western Michigan over UMD 5-3. See the standings there, Don. Again, Mavericks uh, five points ahead of Bemidji State. Uh, looks like that would move to a gap at least temporarily of eight. But, of course, the Beavers and Seawolves yet to play. That game will start after our contest tonight. So you'll have to join us during the pregame show tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Of course, you have other options online. And take a look at the scores. But uh, it is our hope that the Seawolves with a victory tonight yes. would give the Mavericks a chance to close out the home portion of the schedule with a chance to uh, complete the regular season championship tomorrow night. We could have the McNaughton Cup presentation here. We're all poised for that if need be. But a little bit of work yet to done. Mavericks doing their part certainly and then we need the Seawolves to help us out. Magic number will be five after the game. Mavericks win tomorrow night. It would be down to two. If the Beavers were to lose this evening or tomorrow night that would finish it off. But Again, if you want to see a presentation tomorrow night, we need them to lose this evening. Seawolf's one of the teams that uh, certainly is in contention for having to open up the playoffs here in Mankato in a couple weeks. Both teams, full strength. Both teams back at full strength as we had started the third four on four. A couple of guys in the box to finish out their penalties in Newton and Dallas Gerads. Nice to uh, have a, uh, one of the players' parents stop by and greet us, Dan. Yeah, it was very nice. Uh, Charlie's dad. Charlie Gerard. Charlie Gerard's dad stopped and said hello and how much he's enjoyed uh, watching Maverick Hockey over the years and our broadcast, that we certainly appreciate that. Nice nice gentleman, obviously. and Knows talent when he hears yeah, it. Yeah, he certainly <laughs> does. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't wrong. No, not by any means. But uh, his son has been a very good credit to this uh, organization and to his family, and uh, it's been a mutual admiration society, to say the least. Think about some guys, 109 wins coming into this weekend's play. I can't think of a group of seniors that have had more success at the, certainly the Division One level than this group has had as that shot is blocked by Rivera. He's stung a little bit on the play. Bouncing puck. Connor Mackey tries to actually kick it out of the zone, but it's held in by Liam Isaac. I promise you, if they don't get an NCAA tournament win, they're going to feel unfulfilled. And yeah. they'd, they'd give back a whole bunch of those 109 wins if they can get themselves an NCAA tournament victory or two or four, to be specific. To the near side and come all the way out of the zone. Okay, it'll go all the way down the ice for an icing call against the, only, the Chargers. That's the only thing that is uh, on their record right now, Don, that is a disappointment is that they have not been able to get a tournament victory yet. It's got to happen sooner or later, and let's hope it's sooner. And once you get the first one, then you can relax and go out and make a run through the tournament. Off the draw, Smith will track it down, play it back to Hookinson. Near side, Carroll through some traffic. Loose puck is on the ice. Smith trying to find some room, and instead of taking the shot he just taps it over to Carroll who has a wide open net and it's 7-0 Mavericks. Andy Carroll that was just too easy at the end to finish he's just standing there on the corner and puck comes right to his stick and he buries it. Andy Carroll with the finish at 219. Carroll his second goal of the season here you see the pass by Smith and I mean it is just totally wide open is now a change in the nets uh, between periods and that's David Fessenden. By no means Mark Sinclair's fault. No. Though. He's had no help tonight. Smith will pick up another point, his second of the night, with a couple of assists. Out in front, save there by Dryden McCain. Jeremko carries. Hookinson also picking up an assist. 219 is the official time of that goal. Toomey will flip it in toward the zone. This will go down as possibly the most complete victory the Mavericks have had this season. This has been incredibly impressive. From the very first puck drop all the way through, they just keep coming. French. Tanner Hickey plays it to the far side for Amit. Now into Provnik. French behind the net. 
And Pravnik, as we mentioned, two goals already on the night. Amit puts one to the side of the net for Toomey. The Pravnik one more time as the Mavericks are going to start the midst of a line change. Toomey with it. On his backhand, sends one wide off the bench. Smolik gets into the zone and holds. Hickey on the far side will just tap it along the boards. Toomey on his way to the bench, taps it back, and the Mavericks on the attack one more time. I have no idea if anybody keeps track. Charlie Girard just one time right around and put it in on Fessenden, and he just closed the pads yeah. and had no time to react to it, thankfully made the save. I don't know if they keep track of races won during a game, but if you looked at the times where there was two players racing for a puck and the, the race percentage won by the Mavericks tonight, it's incredible. It's got to be in the 90 percentile where they're winning 9 out of 10 races to end the open puck all night long. It's been really, really impressive how hard the Mavericks have played besides how well they played. Zmolik. Charlie Girard puts one in toward the net, and Fessenden will just pull it out of midair. And the Wait, officials exactly. are waiting for him, but yet he's apparently willing to take another yeah. face off. And The ref would have... I don't know if he would have dropped it. I think everybody would have been fine if he would have put it down on the ice. But Interesting stat, but yeah. all seven of the seniors have at least one point tonight. And again, we'll uh, have a chance to talk to Coach Hastings tomorrow night about a group he feels very special about. Uh, he, he knows what how important this group of seniors has been. And we even talked about the other night at a function, the fact that the, for some of these seniors, they might have had some opportunities to look at other options after their junior year, but... They realize there is work yet to be done here. And Dan, you just talked about it a few moments ago. Isaac with the shot. That's blocked by Hookinson behind the net now. Nick Rivera catches up to it. Flipped up and ahead. Walker Dewar. Left off for Rivera. Rivera behind the net tries to bring one out in front. And another one into the glove of Fessenden and another faceoff. If they don't get an NCAA tournament victory this year, it's going to leave a hollow pit in their stomach that they won't ever get rid of. And they know it, and everybody yeah, knows yeah, it, and yep. they, they know they're in control yep. of this one. And yep. games like this, as long as people stay healthy, will build yep. confidence. They'll have a big test next weekend up in Bemidji right. State. And uh, as they found out last year, the importance of playing each of the uh, series at home in the conference tournament. And at that point then, hopefully again, your record good enough. Your strength of schedule obviously is there for the Mavericks with big wins against North Dakota. And well, UMD, the sweep over Thanksgiving weekend up there. And then you, you go to work at the national level. The Mavericks are at the point where <clears throat> it'd be hard for them to not have a number one seed even now. I don't know that they can fall uh, very far into pairwise even uh, with losses to the Beavers, you know, next weekend. So the Beavers are highly touted. And, They've got uh, such a good record on the season, I think it'd be very difficult to fall you know, terribly far. Lutz behind the net in the corner now. Played back to the point, but held by Carroll. Carroll has it, he'll just hold it at the line for Jeremko, far side for Smith. Point for Amit, back for Nathan Smith one more time. Trying to play it down low. He was looking for uh, uh, some type of a tripping call. Mavericks still are able to hold it in the zone. Carroll, Smith one more time. Far side off the bench for Zmolik, who takes the shot. Fessenden makes the save. Well, that's got to be the one right there where, you know, the Mavericks, there's a puck in the open. The Chargers have to win that race and get it out. They don't, then the Mavericks get another attempt. And that's the thing right there where it's got to getting Mike Corbett a little uh, perturbed that uh, you know there's doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fight left in this dog. Yeah, as tired as they are right now, yeah. I wonder if they'll to what degree they'll have anything left in the tank for tomorrow night's return game. Shide will tee one up, and that one carries off a leg wide. Well, my case is they'll tell you it's way more difficult and way more tiring to defend than it is to play offense. And they've been defending for the entire game tonight. 
Napravnik. Toomey with a backhanded attempt. Loose puck. Score! Wow, that's an individual effort by Parker Toomey. 6.20 is the time of the goal. Toomey gets his own rebound off the backhanded shot, puts it in the net, and it is 8-0 Mavericks. This has just been an incredible night for this hockey team. On the final home weekend of the regular season, this group has looked pretty darn good. Toomey crashing, gets a dirty one. Toomey, his second of the night, 13th of the season, as Dan mentioned, at 620. I think Smith will get another assist. Michaelis in the corner. We say Napravnik and French are going to assist on the play. So Napravnik with a three point night. Toomey also with two goals and an assist for three points on the night. And French has three assists, and the points starting to mount up. Allen goes to the box for tripping. We'll take a break, come back. A powerful opportunity for the Mavericks who are in control. In. We'll take a look at the tripping call coming up for Ben Allen with Michaelis in the corner. and Had to stick around the legs, down he goes. Mavericks one for three on the power play. Carroll with the goal here in the period. French along the goal line trying to feed Doer to the point. McNeely up on top. Carroll bouncing puck that he has to control. French one more time was looking along the goal line. French near side in the faceoff circle. Big shot there as Carroll teed one up and the rebound gets away from Doerr and set down the ice. That was a real bomb by Andy Carroll. Could hear it way up here off the pads. Smith in the zone. Will look to kind of just set things up. Dallas Gerads will tie it up with Neudecker on the play. Smith in there to try to punch it out. Michaelis trying to help out as well. Smith has it with Amit breaking down the near side. Amit got a good look. Fessenden was strong on the save. To the far side. Score! <laughs> wow. Michaelis on a one-time feed from Smith to make it 9-0. A power play goal. 7.51, 10 to goal. Why not? Been a long time since we've seen now, one of these here on the home ice, but you'll see it on the replay. Michaelis, just enough of it to force it toward the net, and it snuck past Fessenden for the ninth goal of the night. Yeah, this, uh, this turned it into a bit of a route here that we didn't see coming. Michaelis <laughs> now, his 17th. Remember, 14 minutes into this game, it was scoreless. Michaelis also with the three-point now. Knight on a goal and two assists. Hookinson will take a shot, and that one's up in the air. Bouncing puck still down between the circles. And it comes out of there. Rochick ahead here, a backhanded attempt. It's played in on net, and McKay has to make that save. Napravnik puts one into the zone. Maverick fans would like to see double digits up on the board as far as goals. The Mavericks with 57 shots on goal right now. Again, the record we have at the Division I level is 65 against this Charger team a few years ago. It's the overall record in the program, 84 against St. Scholastica back in 1991. Will not get there, but no. the 65 is in jeopardy. 81 shots on goal is absurd. Uh, it was 84, excuse me. Our 84 but, yeah. shots on goal is absurd. 
I couldn't tell which game it was. It was either a 10-1 or 11-0 win. But it was you know, a big total. Yeah, either way. Yeah, this has been pretty impressive tonight by the Mavericks. I say the, I mean, the nine nothing is one thing, but just the speed that they played with all evening long. The Mavericks have played so fast all night long that uh, that's the thing that I've been most impressed with is how aggressive they have been from the very first puck drop right through now. They've just been after it all night long. Coach Hastings talked about in the keys getting the first goal. It probably didn't come fast enough for right. him, but once it started. It, uh, the Mavericks have not taken their foot off the gas as that one's going to come up out of play. I mean, for, to be honest, from the very first shift of the game, the Mavericks were threatening. Uh, it took them 14 minutes to get the first goal, but once they did, they just kept on scoring. But, man, that, that very first shift of the game, they nearly made it one nothing. 10 seconds in. And there's still 10 minutes to go. Off the draw, this one will be controlled by the Chargers and sent out of the zone. Parker Toomey. Near side for Souter. Flipped into the corner. Neudecker. Off the stick there of French. Mavericks will clear and Toomey will go at work on a four check. Hickey. Peyton Francis can't control that. Play on the near side. Ladigan with it. Daniel Ladigan into the corner. Played out by Connor Mackey. Out in front, no one home for the Chargers. Loose puck still there. Now played here on the near side. Connor Mackey will pick things up. Charlie Girard. He'll dump it into the zone. Far side, Naprovnik is able to get there. Played over for Connor James, still in the zone. Michaelis they played in the corner for Naprovnik. One-timer there by Charlie Girard is stuffed. To the point, Hukinson tees up a shot. Rebound given up. Girard out in front, Naprovnik wow. looking for the hat trick. <laughs> and Fessenden made a really nice save. Fessenden is 6'6", 230 pounds. That's a big goalie. Dumped into the zone, and Hukinson comes after it. The 65 definitely seems in jeopardy. Yeah, it was 65 on, again, February 15 of 2014 against the Chargers. Flipped out of the zone by Allen as we're inside 8.30 left to go in the third. Jeremko, Smith. Jeremko one more time, drop pass there, but it was played onto the stick of Connor Wood, and he flips it out of the zone. Shy, now Jeremko, he'll carry. Newton on the far side. Played out of the zone. Olio drop pass there, and that one is into McKay, who makes the save, and we'll take a timeout here. 9 nothing Mavericks in control. Don Westfall along with Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato where the Mavericks in control. 9 nothing. you can see right now, again, as far as the race for first place, Mavericks with a five-point lead in the conference. They look to be... Uh, on their way to a win for this one. It always comes to you, Don. I know it. And then I had to tap it away right. from me. I didn't need any more money. Just thanks enough and a handshake yeah. from some fans is good enough. Is you know, it was, I know. It was right on my cranium and I swatted <laughs> it away. I don't want any more money. That's it. I'm always a giver, Dan. Darn right. That's right. I got a confirmation from Paul Allen that they do not keep track of attempted shots on goal records. But the uh, record for... Most shots is 65, and the number against Scholastica is correct as well. So Yeah, again, Division One record is 65. Right. The overall record is 84 in 1991. We're not going to get there, no. and I'm very thankful about that. And the 65, the Mavericks have just been dominant here tonight. And as you said, right from the first shift, 
uh, despite the fact it took them 14 minutes to score, but it's been three goals in each of the three periods. And the Mavericks will be uh, three points closer to a WCHA title. Dallas Gerads comes back to help out as that centering, or clearing attempt rather, went off a skate. Gerads, Rivera, Door in the corner. Gerads poked away from Rivera breaking in. Mavericks, a couple guys tonight in the Provnik and Toomey with two goals. Mavericks have not had a hat trick since really the opening of uh, last season when Max Coda got one up against North Dakota. You and I are about the only people who aren't on the score sheet tonight. Smolik. It's early, though. McNeely. French. Rivera down low. Oh, and then Fessenden <laughs> with another big save. Naprovnik has it. That looked like a great opportunity, and it was. But Fessenden makes a big save on that connection between Rivera and French. Toomey. Down low, oh, and Naprovnik trying to play one on a one-timer on the tip. Play down low, and Fessenden has seen enough of this, and he just pounces on top of that one as the Mavericks were starting to buzz. Naprovnik knows he doesn't have many opportunities left. There was a pretty good chance right there. Sixty-two shots on goal for the Mavericks, so six oh eight to go. They certainly seem as though they'll be able to at least tie the record. That's the first That's, attempt there yep. by Naprovnik. Then he almost was able to play one off the skate of Fessenden in on net. Max certainly will get to 100 attempted shots on goal tonight, which is just incredible. Fessenden out in front. Michaelis was trying to get that pass gathered up from Charlie Girard. Played out of the zone, and Connor Mackey is back. Gerard, Souter, dumps it in. Finson, far side with Salerno. Played to an open wing. Bond, long lead pass, tipped into the zone by Allen. In fact, it's up into the net, and the faceoff will come in the spot right in front of the Maverick bench. Mavericks will bring Jeremko out for the draw. Along with Liam Isaac. Not everybody has stuck around for the end of this one, Don. I know you'll find that hard to believe. Isaac is back. Smith after him. Liam Isaac will play it out of the zone, but Carroll will fire it right back in for the Mavericks. Isaac carries at center ice. Near side Thompson puts a shot in and McKay has to make that save. And we will take our last break of the night as the Mavericks, 9-0 lead on him. Ma Dryden McKay, seen 10 shots on net tonight. Obviously not the busiest of nights that he's had. And there's one statistic that he's still looking at along with his teammates as we're inside five minutes remaining. A 9 nothing contest. The Mavericks also potentially on the verge of a Division I high as far as shots on goal. And they have been dominant with three goals in each of the first three periods. Toomey with a couple goals tonight as well as Naprovnik and multiple guys with obviously two or more points. A few with three in the evening. And Mavericks uh, have been dominant from the get-go. Dallas Drads in for the faceoff. Again, he's uh, in on the fourth line tonight as a centerman. We'll see what uh, Mike Hastings thought about some of his lineup decisions, putting guys in different uh, spots as far as the four lines. Seemed to have worked. Also, uh, as far as making some changes and moving guys around in the power play, and Mavericks went 0 for 2 to start the game, but now have scored on their last two attempts, so 2 for 4 with the man advantage. Rivera to an open wing for Naprovnik. He's one of those guys with two goals. Mavericks in the midst of a change. 
Jarad gets there first. The Mavericks will complete the change, still holding the zone. Dubrovnik down low for Toomey. Shied. Left off. Backhanded attempt taken there by French, and that's up into the net for another faceoff. We're back tomorrow night. Pre-game show is at, I think, 6 o'clock <laughs> with a 6.07 face-off. And now uh, that, I would say tune in early because yes. chances are with senior night, there'll probably be some festivities on the ice to acknowledge the seven Maverick seniors. And we certainly would hope to bring you most, if not all, of that as well. And we also hope to end tomorrow night with a trophy presentation on the ice. It could happen. I mean, the Beavers getting upset in Alaska tonight isn't impossible. It's unlikely. Mavericks will probably have to go up to uh, Bemidji next weekend and win it up there. But it would certainly be nice to have that happen this evening for the Mavericks so they can win it on their home ice tomorrow evening. Off the jaw, the Chargers control, but they're going to say it was brought in offside, so we'll redo things with 3.45 left to go. Again, for those of you interested, I know that uh, apparent, apparently that playoff tickets are on sale and available, so check out your uh, local ticket outlets for that. Mavericks will be home for the first two weekends of playoff action. If not for the third, that's yet to be decided, but we'll be back. That's, in fact, after tomorrow night, our next action here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend. We're back Friday, March 6th, with the first of the three-game series against a team yet to be determined. If things were to end as they are right now, the Mavericks would open up with the Seawolves from Alaska Anchorage. But uh, Mavericks still need to secure the top seed, and teams down in their seventh, eighth place. In fact, coming in tonight, Huntsville, even at 10, still had a chance, but they're a few moments away from losing out on that opportunity. Door. Latta is on him defensively. Down low, Rivera puts one through the crease. Dallas Gerads wins that race for the puck. Walker Door. Up on top, McNeely. Door tees one up. Score! Walker Door had a much easier attempt earlier, did not score. He just finished there. He was right on top of the goaltender earlier, and how he got this one through, I don't know. Walker Dewar, his third of the year at 16.52. And the Mavericks have hit double digits. We'll have to go back to the record book to find out the last time the Mavericks put at least 10 on the board. But again, Dewar, his third of the season, and the Mavericks with a 10-0 lead. Dumped in behind Dryden McKay, who can send him Isaac after it. Tapped ahead, here comes Charlie Girard. Mavericks have 10 goals, the Chargers have 10 shots on goal tonight. Who can send his back with Carroll. Played off the boards for Lutz, and he'll just flip it into the zone with two and a half remaining. Played on the near side, now Amit, he'll drive it in. Carried out to center ice. Tanner Hickey over skates the puck. Connor Wood down low, but it's picked up and played out to center ice. Dallas Gerads, he'll dump it in, trying to get one past James, but it's played out. Amit turns things around for the Mavericks. In on net, Fessenden is there to steer it away. Played back to the point, Amit. At the line, the Mavericks will hold with Naprovnik. Down to a minute and a half remaining. Merkley in the zone, left off for Neudecker. Merkley in the corner, plays it behind the net. 
Batumi will come back to play it for the Mavericks to Napravnik. Chipped out of the zone. Andy Carroll picks it up at center ice, gains the red line, and he'll just dump it in. One minute remaining in the period, one minute. Lucas Bond as we're down inside a minute remaining. Played in on net, and Gerard McKay has that save. Last time, Dan, the Mavericks has scored 10 or more goals in a game. Yes. Mavericks versus Canisius, October 23rd, 1998. And they had 11 Ooh. goals that night. That's a while ago. That is a long time ago. We're talking 20-plus years since the Mavericks have had an offensive outburst like this. Mavericks on the board, unofficially right now, 64 shots on goal. So whether they get the one more to tie that mark or not, all that is is a matter for statistics and media guys like you and I to talk about. Lutz in the corner along the boards will be played ahead. Wood at the point. Amit is there. Played down low. Charlie Girard. Girard trying to bring it out on top. McNeely near side for Amit. Jeremko, and now we're going to get yep. Coil is mixing things up. Newton's in there as well. Charlie Gerard. It started with, I think, Coil and Lutz. I'm not sure if Lutz is the right one or not. I thought I picked up the right number as they went to the ice. Fish was in there pretty quickly to break that up, and I'm sure uh, what's been an extremely frustrating night for the Chargers. But yeah, Lutz and Coil, and they'll both get the gate. Jeremko's still kind of tangled up, but I don't think anything is going to come of that one. He's tangled up with Ben Allen. They're, they're talking to each other. Just exchanging pleasantries. Yes. 15.6 seconds to go on this one. 10 nothing. I can imagine you'd be pretty frustrated if you're on that side of it. Yeah, I don't know how you wouldn't be. Officials are going to come over. They also look like they're going to bring Bailey Newton over as well. So far, Lutz the only Maverick in the box. Just 15.6 seconds left to go. Lutz. Coyle, Coyle and Lutz are giving it to each other pretty good in the penalty boxes right now. Referee telling them both to pipe down here so they can get this all done with. It's going to take way longer to finish this up now because of this. Exactly. We could be halfway into the postgame show yes, by now. Absolutely. Coach Hastings is looking forward to talking to you not only now, tonight, but right. also on Monday. Monday morning at 9.10 on the morning blend on KTOE with Mike Sullivan and myself. You see the battling going on right there. I think uh, you're going to get uh, the second player in for the Chargers. I think that's what... Um, So That's Lutz. why Bailey Newton went to the box. Yep, McNeely's in there. Coyle, Newton, and again, all this, I'm not even going to write it down, Dan. No. It's all going to go for now. We'll be it's even inconsequential. Even players as far as numbers of bodies on the ice, and it'll get posted. If For those of you who are keeping track at home officially, it'll get posted at 1944. Yeah, they need a puck because... One of the Chargers tossed it over the ice to one of the fans. <laughs> I saw it happen. Yeah. I'm not going to name the guy because actually I think it was a nice gesture on his part. Sure it made was. some fans day over by the Charger bench. But we need one to finish this game. So. That's true. So it'll get dropped down the ice, carried out to center ice by Hickey, driven in behind Dryde McKay, who will pick up yet one more shutout tonight. For Dryde McKay, the numbers are just phenomenal this season. His ninth shutout of the season, that's a Maverick record. His career-leading 13th shutout again in less than two years. But tonight's story is not so much the shutout by Dryden McKay. Mavericks, most goals that they've scored in over 20 seasons. And it's a 10-0 win tonight, the Mavericks over the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. We will take a break, and when we come back, Dan McCargo will talk to Maverick head coach Mike Casings. Again, Mavericks 10. Alabama Huntsville, nothing from downtown Mankato on a Maverick Hockey Weekend.
for the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. Navarcocky coach Mike Hastings joins us right now. Coach, 10 nothing says everything you need to say, but I want to talk about the speed at which you played tonight. Your team played fast all evening long from the very first shift to the very last one. I was very impressed. Uh, thanks. I, th I thought the guys did a really good job of playing with energy and trying to take advantage of the... Uh, friendly folks who came out and watched us tonight the 4,500 plus so I thought the guys did a really good job of coming out and playing smart and possessing pucks and uh, getting us going in the right direction early. You know 14 minutes before you score the first goal you end up with three in the period but even though you weren't scoring you were getting so many good opportunities so many good looks you had to like the way that your team was playing even though it wasn't going in early. I liked it. I didn't like the finish. <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to be able to get one by Sinclair, and he's been playing so well for him uh, recently, having the 0-0 the zero -zero game up in, in Lake State and facing 40-plus. And It was just nice to see our guys stick with it and then finally be rewarded at the back end of that first period. This Michaelis kid you added to the roster here tonight uh, seems to be a difference maker. Yeah, you know what? It's it's really good. Uh, not Not just the way that he played tonight, but... What he brings to our locker room, what he brings as far as energy, uh, leadership. Um, you know, one thing I've, uh, I've said about him is he, he has a tendency to make the people that he plays with, the guys that are around him, better players. And uh, it's just, uh, it was really good to have him back in the lineup for us. 10 nothing. it's been uh, over 22 years since the Mavericks put double digits up on the board. Not something you see very often in college hockey. My assumption is uh, there'll be a, quite a bit of pushback tomorrow evening from the Chargers. It'll be a completely different game. Uh, so we're going to have to flush this one. Feel good about it tonight as far as uh, getting the three points, flush it, and go right back to business in, uh, in the morning. Um, but our guys have been pretty good at resetting, and I know that they're going to come back with a better effort, and we're going to have to also. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. 10-0 the final score this evening. Minnesota State Mankato over the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville. We'll take a break and come back. We'll have out-of-town scores, highlights, and more on Maverick Hockey Weekend. It was one for the record books tonight down in Mankato as the Mavericks. We had to go back, as Dan just mentioned, back to 1998, last time the Mavericks <laughs> put 10 goals or more on the board, and they do that tonight in fine fashion. Uh, it took them about 15 minutes to get the scoring going yeah. in the contest, Dan, but again, the Mavericks, three goals in the first, three more in the second, four more to finish out the scoring, 40, or, uh, excuse me, 64 shots on goal. It was as dominating as the Mavericks have been all season. Yeah, they, uh, it's as good as I think they, we've seen them play in a long time because of the pace at which they did it. We've seen times where they scored a lot of goals, but there were, there were lulls. There were no lulls. I mean, they were playing hard the first 14, and they didn't score. The next 46, they scored 10 goals, so they had a goal every four minutes the rest of the game. That's just incredible. It was a rapid pace for the Mavericks. Obviously, we can't bring you all 10 goals, and we'd be here to tomorrow night's pregame show, but we will bring you the first four, so we'll walk you through those right now. And the Mavericks, as we mentioned, there's about five and a half left in the first when they get the first goal. Charlie Girard is 13th of the season for Mark Michaelis, and Andy Carroll makes a 1-0 Mavericks at 14-51. Then Julian Napravnik is eighth of the season from Josh French and Parker Toomey at 15:42 makes it two nothing Mavericks. Ian Scheid with the finish, his second of the season from Nick Rivera and Reese Molik at 18:31 makes it three nothing. Then Parker Toomey with his 12th of the season from Josh French at 6:44 the second period that's four nothing, and that's where uh, it ended at the time. But they go on to score six more after that. 98 attempted shots by the Mavericks. They could have got to 100, but they really dribbled out the last minute and a half of the game. Block shots to see there. Power plays, Mavericks 2 for 4. And the faceoff battle 37-26 in favor of the Mavericks. Bowling Green beat Ferris State tonight 6-1. Bemidji and Alaska coming up. Penn State leads the Gophers in the third 2-1. Lake Superior over Northern Michigan 6-1 tonight. North Dakota and St. Cloud tied at 2 in the third. And Western Michigan beat UMD tonight by a final score of 5-3. So all attention right now, the WCHA shifts up to Anchorage, Alaska, where the Seawolves are going to get set to take on the Beavers. Again, the Seawolves with the win means we could have the McNaughton Cup presentation tomorrow night. And, Dan, the Maverick team, uh, you saw in the highlights <laughs> yeah. there that there were just there was nothing. That, you know, the Mavericks chased Sinclair after two periods of play when it was 6 nothing. 
this is not at all an no. indictment on the goaltending. There is just that level of, of disparity talent-wise and the depth that the Mavericks have. No question about it. The Mavericks were the better team tonight by far. Should it be a 10 nothing game? Probably not, but the, the, the disparity was there. So, I mean, you, you can say what you want, but they won every race tonight. They, they beat them to the puck so many times tonight. It's incredible. Uh, if they put that kind of effort forth the rest of the year, they're going to be really tough to beat. And again, tomorrow night will be, it, it's kind of a tough night, Dan, yeah. because, uh, you yeah. know, anybody who played in athletically, whether it was high school, even up to the professional ranks, uh, you know, those last times you're going to be home. Now, right. again, the Mavericks will be home for the playoffs, so it kind of takes a little bit of sting out of it. But just going through the experience and the emotions of a senior night yeah. for seven guys who've been so important to this Maverick team, we invite you to come down and check it out in the arena. Yeah. But, you know, there'll be a lot of emotion in the building. Oh, no question. There'll, there'll be a lot of emotion, but there's some playoff games that they're going to play that are, are way more important than the game tomorrow night. But uh, it should be a fun night. It should be a night to celebrate what this team has done and what is yet to come. We're going to be on the air 6 o'clock is the pregame show on the Saturday night. Mankato again, 6.07, the faceoff. We'd like you in the building, but if you can't be here, of course, we invite you to join us on a Maverick Hockey weekend. We'll be back tomorrow night. So Dan McCarger, Don Westfall, and myself, and then the other students from Bethany Lutheran College, we'll all be back here to close out the regular season. The Mavericks and the Chargers tangle one more time. But again, our final score tonight, it was Minnesota State 10, Alabama. Let's go.